All right, so let's um, derive the forward bias formula for a PN junction. Um, again, we're going to worry about the diffusion limited uh, case, which has a slope of 1. And um, so this is what we're referring to here. You take a slope in this region, it has a slope of 1. And ideally, it has a constant voltage independent um, reverse bias current. So let's derive the formula for this case. All right. In the previous segments, we had calculated um, injection of electrons into a minority, um, as minority carriers into a P dob region. So now this kind of calculation will come again, but will be connected to the current flow in a PN junction. So let's build up this case again. Um, we have a, a, a PN junction here now under bias. We have introduced a quasi Fermi level for the electrons and for the holes, as indicated here. So here for the holes, here for the electrons. We have an applied voltage. The built-in field is reduced by the applied voltage we have effectively reduced this height of the barrier. We will expect to see some current flow flowing from the left and uh, from electron flow from the left to the right in this coordinate system. Now, I can calculate current anywhere as a cross section of this device here or here. As long as current is continuous, it doesn't matter where I compute it. So I'm going to pick a site where I can easily compute this current. And we've done a calculation like this, where we have calculated uh, the current based on a minority carrier injection uh, given a boundary condition. We had determined at a particular boundary conditions be before some electron density that was being injected. And we calculated how this electron density the minority carrier density decayed into the region of high doping. We'll repeat this calculation now, but uh, uh, connect it now to the current. We had also assumed there that there is no recombination and generation to make our life a little bit easier. And that's the calculation we'll pursue now. So we'll look at steady state flow in an acceptor doped region. And we'll look at the uh, current continuity expression here. Again, as a reminder, the change of the electron density with time depends on a spatial change in the current density or recombination and generation. We'll look at steady state. So we'll be canceling out the, uh, the t uh, time dependence. And we said we're going to neglect recombination and generation in that region above there, right? So, now we also have the uh, uh, drift diffusion equation. And we are assuming that there is zero electric field up in this region here. So we can cancel out the electric field term for the electron density. And we're stuck with a term of just the diffusion of electrons on that side. So that's, we're calculating a diffusion limited electron transport. All right, so we're left with that the second differential uh, of the electron density um, must be zero with a diffusion coefficient here. Okay? So all we did is we plug this guy in here, right? Okay. Now, I had shown this expression a few slides back where you can calculate the electron density as a function of position, assuming that you have a quasi Fermi level and for the holes, assuming that you have a quasi Fermi level for the holes. Now EI depends on the position X. All right. So we had um, 
calculated um, this injection before, so let me just go through the steps. Here's a reminder again, n times p is not just ni squared anymore, but it has this uh, exponential here, where the, the difference of the two quasi-Fermi levels um, is the applied voltage. Now, we can assume that at this point here, we're going to home in on this edge. My straight drawing isn't really straight, is it? Here, we call this position 0 plus. And we're going to home in on that position where that is the end of the depletion region under this given bias uh, uh, position. Okay? All right. In that position, we are assuming that the majority carry concentration, the holes, are given by the uh, donors. And in this case, sorry, not donors, acceptors. So the hole density is completely determined by the acceptor doping. Okay. Given that, in equilibrium over here at this position, we can calculate a electron density. Okay. Now this electron density includes from here this applied voltage. Okay. So this is not the equilibrium density anymore. This is now the density as a minority carrier density induced by the applied voltage. Okay. So we can calculate from here the excess electron density as the density under bias minus the electron density without bias. Okay. And if we take the difference, plug this guy in here, sorry, in here, we'll find that the electron density now depends, or the excess electron density depends exponentially on the applied voltage. So exponentially strong, we can inject carriers on this side as minority carriers into the P side. Okay? So a lot of carriers can be injected on that side. And I sketched in here the um, solution profile that we're expecting. We have done this calculation before where we have said we assume that there is a metal contact and the excess electron density out here will be zero. That's the boundary condition we apply. And we have a boundary condition here on this side for the injection of minority carriers into the P side. All right. So here's the boundary condition at the length. We call this here length WP. At this set point, we set uh, delta n equal to zero. And without a bias, um, oh, sorry. In that means at this position that we have reached equi the equilibrium number of electrons. In this case, that's very, very small because we are acceptor doped, because we have just uh, basically um, destroyed all excess minority carriers. All right, going back to the differential expression, differential equation for the number of electrons in the system, we have done this calculation. If there is no recombination generation, this term is just a simple exponential, which means the solution to this um, excess electron density is some linear function with unknown coefficients. And we can figure out what these coefficients are. We said here at WP, that the number of electrons, excess electrons, is zero. And we've said at the origin here, at, uh, at zero, we are injecting an exponentially dependent number of electrons. Now, we'll just put this, these expressions here into 
this linear expression and we get an excess electron density that is exponentially dependent on the applied bias and it decays linearly from the injection point down to the end of the device. Okay, so now we have an uh, expression for the electron density. Now, here's the expression I had from the previous slide. I'm sure we can, you can believe me that I can do the very same thing for the holes. Now, if I go back to my drift diffusion equation, I can now plug in my delta n here, the gradient of this. I had said we don't have any drift current, so that goes to zero. So here we are. I can write down an expression for the electron current that is going to be evaluated just at this point. Okay? All right. So this current density depends exponentially on the applied bias and it has a variety of coefficients in it that stem from the diffusion coefficient and um, uh, the doping in the acceptor. Okay. Now, the trick arises. I'm sure you can believe me that I can derive the same formula for holes on the bottom here, right? Now, this expression here for the electrons is valid at this point. I can calculate a current expression right here. So we know that a current is flowing here at this point. And I can derive a current expression for the holes that is valid exactly at that point. Now, there could be all kinds of interesting things happening inside of this region here. For example, electrons could be converted into holes and therefore uh, reducing uh, the current flow, meaning not all the electrons that start to travel this way make it over. Or the other way around, all the holes that um, are flowing from here might have gotten converted from some other processes. Now, if we assume that there's no, no recombination generation in the middle of the depletion region, then we can make this assumption that these uh, currents are continuous in the depletion region and we can just add them. Now that's a pretty fundamental assumption here. If there's no recombination generation, we can add those two components. And that is how you can get a total current in a PN junction as determined by diffusion only. And it's, de it's determined by the injection of minority carriers N on the P side, and it's determined by the minority carrier concentration of holes on the N side. And right at the edge of the depletion region, you, gener you therefore have a current, and you extend the current, these two currents throughout the depletion region, and you add it, and that gives you the current. Okay? Now, in forward bias, if we take the log of this expression, that is basically the complex exponential here, um, plus some constant. Okay? So, this gives you a slope of 1. If you go in reverse bias, for negative biases, you can neglect this term and the um, you're taking a log of a um, of something that is uh, effectively constant 
and so you have a constant. Okay? So that is how we get forward and reverse bias behavior in, in a diffusion limited PN junction. All right. So slope of this is 1, and reverse bias is constant. So that's this flat line here. And it's this slope here going through the origin, in this case, slope of 1. Okay? So that's your ideal PN junction. And the image to keep in mind, you have lowered the barrier enough that you can inject minority carriers into here. And these minority carriers decay to the contact. You can inject holes in here and they decay to the contact. And you sum up the, uh, the two currents to get the total current in this diode. Now, here you're really um, limited to how many electrons you can inject up here. You're just dabbling around in the, in the um, thermal tail. Okay, therefore you can't really get electrons to flow into the reverse bias direction. Okay. All right. So we have an expression for the forward bias, and now we're going to look at some uh, nonlinear regimes in the forward bias direction. So I'll see you in the next segment.